I'm Sir Evans, and welcome to some real life morning motivation. Because no one wakes up in the morning and says, I hope I have a bad day. My desire is to empower and inspire your daily endeavors. Because you can do whatever you set your mind to. The question is, what do you want to do? Whether you're still finding your passion, pursuing it, or living it, motivation is a daily requirement for your success. So here's your morning motivation. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Surreal Life Morning Motivation Podcast Show. And I am your host for the day, and your host as always, Sir Evans. I hope that your week has been fantastic, and even if it's not, it's still some room for it to get better, and I hope that we're learning from those experiences that might not be so pleasant, right? For me, I would think, um, I was just asked a question, what state do you think that you're in right now? Um, I was asked, what state is this for you? And for me, um, the answer for that after I had to spend some time thinking about it it's a state of refreshment. Like, I think that over, you know, transitioning out of 2020, um, I had a lot of friends and family that were, you know, losing those that were near and dear to them. And also some trying times for um, even myself. But I found it to be a season in which um, the Lord had called me to really be there for people and it's, it's a process and I'm still striving to be there for people and I think sometimes um, we pour and we pour however I have no issues with pouring because I know who's doing the repouring but it was definitely a season where pouring and pouring and now it's a season of I'm in a state of refresh I'm in a state of refill because I was always the kid at McDonald's that was going to take advantage of them free refills and if God gonna give me a refill, I got my supersized cup ready to be filled up. You know what I'm talking about? Sure you do. <laughs> so with that being said, I want to welcome you back. Um, it's February, y'all. Can you believe it? I know I can because time just flies that way. And this time last year, we were entering into pandemic season. Yes. It has been a year. And I tell you what, it sure feels like it has been a year. And um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the ups and downs. I think that there was a lot of things that um, this season has exposed. But I think that one thing that's important is that God's influence still reigns supreme. And... I think that that's a good a time as any to get into this morning motivation topic. The topic of today is influence, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, the morning motivation topic of the day derives from you from the morning motivation text thread that has been going out for years. You can join that by texting motivate me to 31996. Once again, text motivate me to 31996 to be added to that morning motivation list. It is a list um, comprised and then the podcast discussions derive from ones that you guys select that you might want to hear more about or the ones that I get a lot of questions about that you just can't cover in a short morning message. So without any further hesitation, let's get into today's morning motivation. Influence is defined as the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, or behavior of someone or something. We've all been influenced by something or someone at some time in our lives, or we have used our power of influence over others. The thing that we must remember about influence is that you can't be influenced by something or someone that you don't know. For instance, if you've never read or subscribed to the Morning Morning Motivation message, then there is no way you would have even had the opportunity to be influenced by one of the messages. This can have some pros and cons because it's important to know what they are. 
on one hand, if we are striving to achieve a particular goal, then you have to be mindful of how well you know about that goal and what it takes to obtain it. One of the biggest hurdles to success is ignorance. And that's simply a lack of knowledge. Are you taking the time to get to know the influence you want in your life or no? On the other hand, we can't be influenced by what we don't know. And that can be problematic, especially, let me rephrase that. We can also be influenced by things that we do know, and that can be problematic, especially if those are negative influences in our life. We can't successfully acquire change if the primary influences in our lives encourage stagnation and procrastination. The good thing about our brains is that they are like a sponge. In that regard, they are like a sponge in the regard that some of what you've learned can be wrung out, which makes room for new knowledge. What influences do you have in your life currently? Are they having a positive effect on your character, development, or behavior? If not, then new influences and alterations may be in order. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about influences and being influential. They kind of tie in one and the same, depending on which way on the road of life you are traveling and in which lane you are traveling in. Because you're influencing somebody and somebody's influencing you. Kind of how I started the episode saying that um, it was a season of refreshment. You know, I'm pouring out. Ultimately, God is pouring into me. However, there are still physical people around me that are also doing pouring as well such as my wife, such as my friends, such as my mentors, they are able to pour something into me when I need to pour into others. Those can be considered influences in my life. On the other hand, as I'm doing that pouring at the same time, I could also be considered an influence to others. Whether it is good or whether it is bad, you are having an influence on others and you are being influenced by others and other things. So it's important to recognize what are those influences. So let's kind of break down what exactly an influence is one more time. An influence is that capacity to have an effect on the character, development, or behavior of something or someone. So when we really just kind of dive into the character standpoint of that. So the character we talked about a little bit of this. We talked a little bit about this on a resolutions episode because your character is what makes up you. It is that makeup. It is if you were to leave the room and someone were to have a conversation about you and they asked what type of person is such and such the answer would be what they deem to be your character. Those things will be characteristics that are used to describe you. So in that reference, our influences create our character. Our influences create how we develop and what we develop into, which also segues into that development. Not only do influences impact our character but they also impact our growth or lack thereof because even if you're not flourishing into something positive you're still flourishing into something negative if you've ever seen a garden if you've ever seen a flower bush you will always see that there are more things growing in that area than a desired plant vegetable or flower right there's more things growing in that area because there are more things than the desirable taking root. You have weeds. All of these things are also growing at the same time. So don't think that just because you're growing 
that it's something positive and don't think just because it's not something positive that you're not growing so why is this important right why is influence so important and when we look at social media today when we look at the world it's it's interesting because even online the term influencer has become the the step same level as a celebrity you are an influencer meaning that you are in some shape form or fashion a celebrity the reason why this is just in a nutshell just to simplify this you have to think about the buying power we live in a capitalistic society so with that comes marketing with that marketing comes a product that needs to be pushed or needs to be influenced so when the buying power lies in the consumer but the consumer is watching the influencer not only can they influence you on a lifestyle or maybe influence you on an educational pattern or influence you on whatever it may be they can now also influence you into a particular product for example I you're watching this podcast right or you're listening to this podcast and I might be drinking on you know a certain brand of coffee I might be lighting a certain type of candle in the background and that might be influential to you it says hmm something that you might want to buy into so that power is used by the influencer here's something that we must keep in mind also influence dictates culture and culture dictates relevance I'm gonna say that again influence dictates culture and culture dictates relevance so I don't know if you know this but everything is pretty much dictated by culture right and that culture is built by the influence that it has and that also plays a factor on the relevance so there's a couple different means of influence and I, I want to dive into those in a second here but I think it's so important to recognize the chain of command which I just stated influence dictates the culture and the culture is di dictates the relevance so as I kind of dive into these I want you to kind of just keep that idea in your mind even as you're thinking about your influences how you're influenced into others and also even if you're potentially wanted to be an influencer these are things that you have to keep in mind and I want you to keep in mind that 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 quote as we kind of dive into this right being um, a psychology major somebody who um, studied in psychology another thing that always fascinated me was sociology right sociology was always interesting even from a psychological standpoint because even though it was the study of um, social interaction there were a lot of times where those theories would overlap with psychology because the way someone thought their thinking patterns as um, from a from a social standpoint so one of the interesting ones that jumped out to me as I was kind of preparing for this is the influence of social learning right so social learning something coined by uh, Albert Bandura um, it emphasizes the importance of how we model and imitate behaviors attitudes and emotional reactions of others right social learning hence the name um, is basically based upon the environmental and cognitive factors that we interact with that influence our, our learning and our behaviors prime example when I was a kid my siblings would interact with my mother and my father a certain kind of way there's a certain kind of way that they would talk um, there were certain kind of things that you do in the home and you can even look back at your own childhood and maybe think about this this is this is a great example especially if you're not the oldest child we, we got to use a different example for y'all for y'all oldest in a bunch right 
But one of the things I saw, one of the things I saw was them interacting with my parents a certain way. So what I did before I could even fully comprehend why it was, I began to model, even prime example, biting my tongue with my father. Um, not really sharing your thoughts, not really being that um, emotionally transparent when it came to my father. And even before I got of age to realize he was a little bit emotionally closed down, I really modeled it from my siblings. I can even think back to it as a child, having those type of um, emotional um, situations with your dad, you know, um, crying, laughing, joking around, just, just, you know, your silly things like that. And it wasn't something that was ill received. However, I didn't really see being modeled by my siblings. Now we could say that this might be my siblings. We could say that it was my parents. However, one thing that is true is that I learned it from my social surroundings. Think about the school that you went to. Think about the neighborhood that you grew up in. Think about the, your family that might be outside of your immediate family. How did they play a factor? What did you learn from them that as you think about it and as you listen to this, you maybe even be saying, hmm, I never even realized that I picked that up from them. This is why our past is so important when we're analyzing our present because there's so many things that we absorbed like a sponge when we were children that we have absolutely no idea or we don't take the time to recognize where those ideas, behaviors, and developmental traits came from, where they originated from. And one thing that I picked up in therapy that's very beneficial to that is sometimes you have to go back and recognize those issues. And that social learning has also been kind of labeled with the whole group thing. There's a lot of concepts and theories that tie into this, but group think is another one that's kind of like that, where it's, um, it's kind of tied in with the bystander effect where a group of people might think alike based upon the majority thought of the time. Same thing with the bystander effect where the reason why you might see in a movie and this is real life, it happens where somebody might be take, getting taken advantage of. Maybe somebody is getting robbed on a busy city street or unfortunately has happened. Somebody is being murdered on a busy street or even if it's not that busy and you hear them screaming. What is the reasoning behind... <laughs> A hundred people helping or a hundred people calling for an emergency versus one or none. That concept ties into that group think it ties into that bystander effect because even though people might be individually in their own places, as a group, they're thinking, mm, somebody else will take care of that. As a group, they're thinking, eh, I'm pretty sure somebody else has probably already called for assistance. And that social learning is important because for one, we have to remember that our brains are a sponge. They're going to suck it up. And you also have to be mindful with knowing this, what type of social learning are you putting yourself in the presence of, right? What are you allowing yourself to be um, engaged in that can impact the way that you develop, right?